Welcome back, these are the news from Kazakhstan, I'm Askar Shirelief and here are the main top stories. Astana's real estate investors picket the central office of the ruling party in Nuratan. All forces of the capital are now directed at preparing the main political event of the year, the summit of the OSC. Forever young, the anniversary of Komsomol is celebrated in Kazakhstan. The new picket of Astana's real estate investors was held on Friday next to the office of the ruling party in Nuratan. The owners of apartments in unfinished residential blocks demand the active intervention of the party's public committee, which should include representatives of Kazakh government and banks. Before the crisis, many people invested heavily into construction, but later their money vanished and most developers announced bankruptcy. The defrauded core investors have repeatedly appealed to the authorities and held protest actions, but the Kazakh government remains quite categorical in respect to this issue. The musical rally was organized next to the office of Nuratan. There, real estate investors were singing songs themed around houses and hope. While some were singing, others drafted an appeal to the ruling party. They demand to recommence the work of the party's public commission on the issues of real estate investors. We hope that Nuratan will eventually resolve this issue, as they have promised to help us, although now they are keeping silent. Later it was decided to take the office of Nuratan by storm. Action participants asked for a meeting with the party's leader Nursultan Nazarbayev or at least his deputy Nurlan Nigmatulin. Instead they drew the attention of another lower-ranked party official, although one who is much closer to the people. I am Zhumazhan Zhukenov, the head of the public reception. I just came by to submit some papers. The real estate investors used the opportunity to tell the party members about all of their problems. The head of the public reception, Zhumazhan Zhukenov, tried to calm people down, said that their problems can be resolved and even promised to help personally. I'm working here for only a year and I'm ready to help. I will see into your problems. The head of the public reception doesn't make any decisions. He's just an ordinary specialist doing simple procedures. We still have to receive an answer to our inquiry, and there is little hope left that we will. We hope to talk with the party leadership, otherwise Nuratan once again proved that it only gives promises. With each new rally, the protests of the defrauded real estate investors gain more strength. The next action is planned to be held during the OSC summit to tell the international community about existing problems. There is seemingly no other way to affect the situation. The ruling party often mentions that the well-being of the people is their top priority, although the example of the striking core investor shows that it is actually a formality. In reality, the party has another topmost goal, namely to propagate the message of the president. Now, during the rampant rumors of the possible early elections, Nuratan was given some $7 million to bring the word of the head of state to each and every citizen of the country. According to many observers, this basically turns the president's message to his running campaign. Indeed, the goal-setting strategy fulfills a substantial role and many need it. However, not everyone in dire need of determining goals attended the theoretical and practical conference held as part of the message propaganda. The main strategy of the country, identified in the theme of the conference as an incentive for the modernization, was read out by representatives of the NGOs which received grants from the government. This year, a record $7 million were allocated for the propaganda of the president's message. The goal of this ministry is just to utilize the money. However, no one is interested in the very problems it can resolve and the practical efficiency of events that should facilitate it. The practical efficiency of accepting new members to the ruling party in Nuratan is more understandable. First of all, the ceremony is real show. And secondly, the party found additional 100 members and the well-known and promising athletes. Thanks to you, we are becoming stronger. We and our leader, Nursultan Nazarbayev, must achieve the programs and goals that are set today by the Nuratan political party. The ceremony can be seen as exemplary among other similar propaganda events. Sergei Gromov, the party secretary and the master of sports in Greco-Roman wrestling, was welcoming the new members while not forgetting to say all the right words and strategically pose for cameras. 
Now let's turn and show your party card to the camera. The party functionaries are planning to increase the pace of the propaganda as they have to utilize provided for these purposes $7 million. The involvement of athletes symbolizes the firm position of the general line of the ruling party. The official representative of the Kazakh Justice Ministry dismissed all claims of the famous human rights activist Evgeny Zhovtis against the head of the panel settlement where he serves his term. Previously, Zhovtis filed a complaint for imposition of disciplinary sanctions against him, issued for the refusal to sign an employment contract and watching television at restricted hours. The spouse of the activists who also represent his interests is quite concerned with the official reaction as it proves once again that the authorities simply want to keep Zhovtis on the inside and will do everything to prevent his early release. Watching TV in the panel settlement is fraught with disciplinary action, especially for a reputable human rights defender Evgeny Zhovtis, who is serving his term for a lethal car accident. Apparently, this is the position of the Justice Ministry as voiced by its official representative, Yervolat Yerimbet, in response to the request to comment on the petition of Zhovtis against the head of the panel settlement. We are currently working on a reasonable response as many of his claims do not correspond to the norms of the panel system. Wife and lawyer of Zhovtia Svetlana Vitkovskaya is surprised as the entire ministry is defending an ordinary state official in the head of the panel settlement. Vitkovskaya feels he treats Zhovtis differently than other prisoners. The human rights activist was issued his first reprimand when he refused to work as a safety engineer, explaining that he has no corresponding qualifications. The second reprimand was issued for watching the World Cup after the lights out during the three-day visit of his son. Thus, at the time, he was not subjected to the settlement's regime, says Vitkovskaya. I just think that some people simply want to toughen his detention conditions while he's there. We believe that he is issued absolutely unjustified reprimands and is not given deserved promotions. On September 3, 2009, Evgeny Zhovtis was sentenced for four years of imprisonment. In January of 2011, he will have the chance for a parole. This is why his wife takes all reprimands and promotions this seriously. The lack of the former and the number of latter will truly affect the future of the human rights activist. The opinions that it was not an accident that Zhovtis was sentenced just a few months prior to Kazakhstan assuming its OSCE chairmanship have been voiced more than once in the past. The famous human rights activist sharply criticized the enforced policies in the country and could have greatly spoiled its image on the eve of the OSCE summit. At the moment, it seems that the entire city of Astana is actively preparing for this major political event. People in lab coats and protective masks at the entrance contrast the usual comfort and serenity of the Five Star King Hotel. According to the scenario, a mass poisoning occurred in the hotel restaurant and the doctors have to be ready for anything. It is virtually and politically important to preserve health of each and every participant of the OSC summit. There are no small details for us now. Usually we only check facilities like this twice a year, whereas now we will do it every day. We will be working with every hotel, restaurant, cafe or any other facility. To accommodate the important guests during the OSC summit, specialists examined 150 hotels in Astana. In the end, only less than half of them were recommended for the Foreign Affairs Ministry. The main criteria are the high level of comfort, security, diverse cuisine and well-trained staff with the knowledge of at least one foreign language. If we will speak about body language in English, so what kind of body language characteristics do you know? Children in the capital will also feel the presence of this important political event. The education ministry cancelled classes in all city schools for the duration of the summit. These extra holidays will be compensated during the fall break. Teachers say there is no cause for concern as the educational process will not be affected. All of the parents understand that this is a global event taking place in Astana, so it is okay. Everyone will be involved in one way or another. Those city residents less involved in the preparations for the summit are still getting ready for the occasion. Some buy food ahead, others plan to leave the capital altogether for the duration of the event. People living inside the red zone, which encompasses almost the entire left bank, will be able to enter the territory only using special passes. All domestic flights will be cancelled in the local airport and the carriers have already stopped selling tickets for the important dates.
While mass poisonings are simulated in Astana, the town of Ekibastus in the Pavlodar region registered a quite real outbreak of the hepatitis A. One school had to be closed for quarantine with 15 pupils hospitalized in the span of this week. Health authorities of the area say the infection was spread by a seventh grader who was reportedly consuming watermelons. According to the deputy director of the department, Saulia Spanova, the schoolgirl already felt ill on October 11th, but for more than two weeks she didn't ask for medical attention. Experts say that the spread of the infection in the school could be caused by a violation of sanitary norms. The school has only one water source and the wash basins do not have soap. The headmaster, school nurse and the administrative manager have been already fined accordingly. This is already the second school in the Pavlodar region closed for quarantine over hepatitis this month. In early October, a school in the village Yamashova was closed for a similar outbreak of the hepatitis A virus. Statistics show that the number of lethal car accidents is rapidly growing in the South Kazakhstan region. Just recently, a passenger bus crushed a young woman and her baby while the driver supposedly didn't even have a driving license. The mother of two, Olga Isabaeva, and her one-and-a-half-year-old son were hit and killed by a bus on their way home from a store. According to witnesses, the traffic police summoned to the scene revealed that the bus driver had no driver's license with him, and it is possible he doesn't have them at all. I took off from a bus stop and saw a woman crossing the road. My brakes didn't respond and I attempted to swerve to a ditch but still hit her. Lethal car accidents are not rare in southern Kazakhstan and its regional center of Shimkense ambulance medics. Besides this strategy, the resuscitation experts have counted three other lethal accidents involving buses last year alone. In total, 11 accidents and 18 injured people were registered in recent years. The issue is not about the prevention of car accidents, but rather about the control and decrease of the number of casualties. The traffic police avoid commenting the high mortality rates and even seem to try to conceal the facts. The data provided by the police over the accident casualties in southern Kazakhstan differs from that of the medical workers. According to doctors, 441 people died on the roads of the region since the beginning of the year. The rate is higher than that of the U.S. Army in Afghanistan. My daughter now says that her mother watches us from the skies. Olga Isabaeva was 33, now Marat Isabaev will be a single parent raising a six-year-old daughter. The first thing he will do when the grief will go down a bit is teach his daughter how to properly follow the traffic rules. In the meantime, the police in eastern Kazakhstan are actively fighting against poaching. The air patrolling is conducted as part of the countrywide preventive operation nicknamed the Poacher. Over 140 vehicles, two helicopters and almost 700 people are involved in the search of poachers. In just a week of the operation, the police have detained almost 200 violators, 62 cubic meters of wood, over 200 kilos of fish, a carcass of an elk and four carcasses of roe deer, all red-listed, have been confiscated already. This, however, is just the preliminary result, say policemen. The amount of damage is estimated at almost $12,000. Six criminal cases have been already instigated and another two are under question. Together with foresters, we air patrol hard to reach in remote areas of the region, inhabited by endangered species including taimans, elks and bears. And finally, on Friday, Pavlodar celebrated the anniversary of the Young Communist League. The organization was founded on October 29, 1918, with a view to bring the Soviet ideology to the youth of the USA. Despite the demise of the organization some 20 years ago, the remaining Young Communists still celebrate the holiday annually. The only difference now, Lenin's portrait has been replaced with that of Che Guevara. This is not the 1980 Moscow Olympics, not the mascot flying away, it's not a communist bear, but a good old Che, the leader of the reinvented Kazakh Komsomol. 92 years ago, the organization called the All Union Leninist Young Communist League, or the AULYCL, was born. It doesn't matter where the wind will take the leader of the Young Communists. We wanted to draw the attention of the Pavlodar youth and public to the values of Komsomol. These values are very relevant now because the generation next is at crossroads and doesn't know where to go. Participants of the rally handed out leaflets with the rule of conduct for true members of Komsomol. The smaller number of participants was explained due to the study still being in progress. The organization's leadership in the headquarters is still optimistic and says that even though small in numbers, altogether Komsomol members represent a real force. 
These were all the major events of the day. We will have more next week. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Goodbye.